Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Green Terra with Elena Chapman. My name is Della, and I'm the moderator for this evening. The Green Terra is a weekly interactive community group for seekers exploring ways to activate possibility and creativity in their life by delving deep into spiritual dimensions that are all too often ignored in our fast-paced modern world. The format of each week features a teaching set of context for the week following an open conversation facilitated by Elena Chapman, providing opportunities for participants to engage, ask questions, share experiences, and deepen the teachings. All participants are automatically muted upon entry. So in order to participate in our interactive portion of the Green Terror, please raise your hand using the raise hand tool in the Zoom dashboard and I'll unmute you. And then there comes a point in the evening where everyone will be unmuted so that we can have a common flow of conversation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our host for this evening, Green Terra, Miss Elena Chapman herself. Hello. Hi there. I'm Elena Chapman. And just to let you know a little bit about me, I'm founder of Soul Manifesto. I am uh, a spiritual thought leader, a spiritual curator, actually. What I do is I draw from every modality, every religion, and even science to bring you some of the most, well, the nuggets, the, the true, true meaning of everything. And you find that things are not so different among anything, that we're all looking for the same. Then there are some spiritual truths. So I also am a two-time international best-selling author, and I have a new book coming out called Hello Soul. Very blessed to be able to do that. And that is a really cool soul and it's my journey and also to help others to start to connect and live by their soul. And I'm also a radio show host of and podcast of Magical Moments for Ease and Betterment in Your Life. And then of course, I'm a mentor also. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about abundance how do we get abundance into our life and i think you know i found um that uh, in my years of doing this and learning that a lot of people don't really know what abundance is they a lot of times they equate it only with money but abundance is something that it's everything. It's the way we live. It's, it's what we experience. It's that overwhelming sense of awe and peace and joy. I had one of, one of a, a person that I help a lot has said, abundance means plenty. I like that, plenty. Fulfillment, joy, and happiness, peace, and serenity contentment, and ultimately love. Filling your world with love and peace and prosperity. But it's all together. It's not just one thing, like being thankful for prosperity. And then that's prosperity, money. Abundance is everything. It's the essence of life. It's feeling that goodness. It's feeling that immense happiness and joy and awe. So how do we open up to that? How do we start? I think, let's be honest with ourselves first. When we say abundance, what are we looking for? And if you have a pad of paper in front of you, then why don't you write it down? And if you don't, then make a mental log. I'll take a minute, let you do that. Hi, Carolyn. Right now we're just putting down 
Oh, she's connecting to audio. Right now we're just putting down what abundance means to us. I'm gonna start do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't know if people even know what that is anymore. Wasn't that Jeopardy? I think that was Jeopardy. I don't watch those game shows, but boy, that really kind of always stuck in my head. Okay. So what abundance means to you is your own special meaning. And that will guide somewhat in how you will experience. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, how you will experience opening up to it. Okay. But abundance, gosh, when I, do I feel like I have abundance? I do. I do. I have this fantastic family. My life is full of love. It's full of fun. It's full of ease and flow. It's full of ah, just that awe. It's how I feel inside. It's this great contentment and peace. Now, each of those things has its own kind of, they come together but then they also have some separate things that we can help to encourage that feeling. Because see, anything we want to feel in our lives has to happen in here first. All right? Everything, everything in this outside world, whether you want abundance, whether you want prosperity, whether you want love, whether you want whatever it is, your goals, it has to happen in here. So how do we build that feeling of abundance inside ourselves so that it starts to come out into our reality? And that's what I want to talk about today. Now, does anyone have a question yet or a comment? No? Okay. Then I'll keep going. All right. So I always say that if we want abundance or anything in our life. The first thing is we got to realize what our life is. And a lot of times we don't. We don't. We simply do not. A lot of us focus on the negative in our life. What we don't have. Well, we don't have money. Oh, we don't have this. Or we don't have that. Or we don't live where we want. Or whatever, whatever. It's always we don't have. We don't. It's always a don't. And it's negative. We focus on the negative aspects of our life. And so in order to get on an equal playing field and in order for us to start feeling that abundance right off the bat is using gratitude. I know people talk about gratitude a lot. I know I talk about gratitude. But before you start anything, whether you are going for your goal, whether you are going to live by your soul, which is what I teach, whether you are going to... Um, Take on just a new project you're not even sure you want to do. Whether you're moving, whatever you're doing in your life, if you start out with gratitude, it opens it up so that your mind doesn't go right to the ego and the critical mind, such as a simple thing like a move, which isn't so simple, but you know we think of it that way. Um, so if, if I'm going to move, all of a sudden, I'm going to go right here. Oh my gosh, I've got so much stuff. How am I going to pack all this stuff? How am I going to, I've got to call the movers. I've got to get things packed. How am I going to do this? How are we going to live here? How am I going to get everything to there? It's going to cost money and blah, 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 blah. Negative, 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 negative. All the plans we make are, and it puts stress on us. And do we feel abundance? Do we feel joy for where we're moving? No, we're swallowed up in this negative, okay? So when we add gratitude, it takes us out of that negative and it puts us in to this, wow, I'm so happy and grateful. I have this beautiful new place that I'm going to. And I'm so happy and grateful that I am not gonna have to furnish it all from start because I have what I need. I just have to move it there. Doesn't that already change the whole idea of that move right there? And instead of feeling this heaviness, 
you're already lifting your vibration into an abundance. I am so happy and grateful that I have friends that I can call upon to help me move. <laughs> and I'm so happy and grateful that I can throw a wonderful moving party where they can really enjoy it and we can have fun together as we move. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm even planning the move in a way that makes it fun, that makes it abundance filled, all right, with love and friends and having what I need and joy and peace versus going into that negative place. Do you see the difference? Gratitude, I know we, you always say list five things that you're grateful for, but gratitude can be used to create your future. Gratitude can be used to create the picture that you want to have versus the picture that you negatively feel you have. Do you see the difference? And that move is like the perfect example. And you can do that with anything in your life and, and it raises your vibration. Now, I would love for some comments here because I bet there's some questions and if there's not some questions, I'd love to know how you feel about that. Anyone open to that, please? Because come on, that's an aha moment. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hello, Carolyn. Hey, how are you feeling, sweetie? I'm feeling much better. I'm so glad. Good. That's much fantastic. Better. That's fantastic. I'm so happy. So happy. So what do you think of this? I absolutely agree. Because <laughs> the reason I say that is because uh, this whole process right here that I'm going through has been a reminder yes. to, to, to pull out of it by being grateful. That's one of the key ingredients. It does. It helps you. Definitely, when you said that it raises your vibration, that definitely helps. I had to stop looking at what I thought or perceived as wrong, what was wrong, and look at all the right things. Yeah. Look at all the I just have to be grateful. Yes. Stop looking at what I don't have, look at what I do have. And then what I don't have, I started figuring out ways where, but yeah, but I don't really need that because such and such. Yes. They, they get smaller. They fade into the shadows. It fades into the shadows. Yes. You know what it does? It really, it, and even more than just shades into the, the problems, the problems that you're having with something, all of a sudden, get put out here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I did this interview with this guy on, um, on Magical no Moments. I just did it uh, this ye yesterday. Today's Thursday, so Wednesday. I record on Wednesdays. And uh, this man is incredible. He, um, he was just out of college and he was um, working, got a job right away with a Fortune 50 not even a Fortune 500, but a Fortune 50, which wow. is even more, yeah, company. And then before he knew it, he got into a car crash Ooh. and ended up paralyzed from the neck down. So he said to himself, okay, you know, after he spent six months in rehab and everything else, he comes out of it and he says, all right, what do I want to do? Not woe is me, not how am I going to function, but what am I going to do? And so we started talking about how now, then he, all of a sudden, what did he end up doing? I'll finish that story first. He ended up going and becoming a financial advisor, which I had fun talking to him because that's what my dad was. <laughs> he worked for my dad's competitor though. <laughs> but still, he became a financial advisor for Merrill Lynch. And he did really, really well. And it's all about how he did these gratitudes and all about how he sees the problems out here. They're not, he's not in it. He's not in woe is me. Oh, I, I, how am I going to get around? How am I going to be able to function in this world? Oh my gosh, I'm paralyzed. I'm paralyzed. I'm paralyzed. You know that just sinking into it, sitting in it, becoming it. 
he didn't do that. He puts it out here. Okay, this is the problem. Yeah, I have an accident. I'm here, but but how am I going to, I'm going to take the steps to achieve what I want to achieve. The problem out here is, okay, what functional things do I need to do to be able to attain what I want to attain? Yeah. And it's totally different. And gratitude is the biggest start of that. Yeah. And, and I think, it's a skill. It's funny. I learned this at a young age because that's how my dad thought. And when he said it in the radio show, it just, I went like a time warp right back to when I was a kid hearing my dad say the same thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, that's what I, that's why I do it. I knew it from my dad, but, but that is, that is what you're doing. When you go into your gratitude, all of a sudden, the problems, the health problems you were having went out here. Right. And then, yeah. And then you could look at them and say, okay, so I'm having this problem right now. So what do I want to do with it? Instead of, oh, woe is me. I've still got this problem. Oh my gosh, I'm still injured here. You're not there anymore. Yeah. Carolyn, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah. This is a life-changing skill and it will add abundance greatly because you can do it to anything anything and then one of the things i appreciate too is it, it really does help when you surround yourself with people with that mindset as well that was one of my goals right there. that's exactly right yeah like minds like minds and it is it's surrounding your world it's surround carolyn you hit the uh, great now gladius is that correct and I don't know if that's your name or just your name. Yes, my screen Hi. name. I'm dead. I'm dead. Did I say it right? Good, good. Yeah. I'm proud of myself when I get a name right. <laughs> so um, what do you think about all this? Uh, I think... Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm practicing... Uh, for one, I have seven years of sobriety. And I'm also I'm a practicing, practicing Zen Buddhist. Awesome. Um, so I, uh, I, I've been doing that for seven years. Uh, and, um, and it's interesting, right? Because everything is so paradoxical. Uh, um, sometimes what you resist persists. And, um, but I think having the right attitude, which is what I think what you're pointing at is an attitude. Um, uh, is it doesn't always come easy, like you said. It's it's easy to fall into negative thoughts and old patterns, and so a lot of the things I believe are stemming from early childhood development and uh, you know early behavioral uh, survival instincts that we carry into adulthood um, yeah. that uh, can can be a hindrance on uh, on on things becoming better than they they were or are. So uh, I, I use the analogy of, uh, of a sail being filled, you know, like when you really feel good and positive and energetic and it's like you have a full sail, like, you know, you get plenty of wind at your back yes. and, uh, and that feels really great. Um, but trying to, you know, relying on others for that air in your sail is not necessarily the way to do it. You need to sort of come from the inside. You know, how do I fill my own sail? Right. Um, you have to fill your own sail first, always. Or, yeah. else, or it's fragile. It's yeah. fragile. Yeah. So uh, I'm very grounded. I, I, I live on a small farm. I do organic gardening. Uh, we've been in the garden all day today. Um, and I had my own business. I had a motorcycle car dealership. Uh, so I'm very capable and handy and uh, very cerebral, so I'm more trying to get into my body unless I'm out of my head a little bit. Oh, um, that's a nice thing. Yeah. Or filling the head with the good and, and the abundance filled. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yes, it, I do want to say it has, everything has to come inside. Everything. And so you have to build the habits like the gratitude to start you to 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 build
the belief. It's a belief and you're changing another belief, whatever you have in your childhood. Some of us grow up with a very strong lack that we've heard from our parents and our sisters and our brothers. And when you have that lack in surrounding you as a kid, what is it from one to six? We, we are, that's when we're formed. That's when our habits are formed. That's when our whole everything, I think it's, um, Dr. Um, Gaber Monte, I think it is. I, oh, I shouldn't say names if I don't remember. Yeah, but, I, I listened to him. Okay, you know, yeah, he stems, stems everything from the childhood. I even go further back than that. I think um, it's even past lives that sometimes come into this life. Uh, we carry that in our DNA and it, it can affect us. But it's learning how to develop habits in ourselves to build the beliefs in ourselves of what we want to believe. And if we want to believe that we have ease and flow, that we have about abundance, that's the first step in starting to create it in our world. But we have to become it first. That's the beautiful law of gestation. We have to become it first. And ways that we can become it is sharing with the gratitude because it does take that problem and put it out here. Then keeping it out there is the other thing, because if you're used to it and you have the habit of, of hearing people like parents and teachers, or, or you were one that just always mulled that problem over in your mind, then you're gonna take that problem when your gratitude's over and just go and suck it back in. <laughs> and start ruminating on it and you're back into that negative spot again. So it's really being very conscious as you're going through these different steps saying, okay, my problem's out here. Okay, so I have this problem out here. All right, what do I wanna do about it? And name three steps right off of it, but keep it out here, keep it objective, keep it at an arm's length. Don't allow your mind to go mulling all over it. I also tell people who have trouble staying out of that ego critical mind and, and tending to ruminate, to keep it out here, write down three things or put a piece of paper. If it's really something that's bothering you, put a piece of paper on a table. And, and every time you pass by, that's the only time you allow yourself to write down one solution. And then when you leave the table, it's gone. These are little techniques to just help you to separate the problem from you. But we're talking more about abundance, but I thought that might be a helpful tool too. But now to talk about abundance. All right, so let's get back. We have the gratitude we start with. And, mm -hmm. and that's a big thing. It's starting to, to open ourselves to that wonder. The second thing I wanted to talk about is, is starting to quiet the mind and to start training the mind. Now, Carolyn and Gladius and anybody on Facebook, um, I, when I first got started in all my spiritual, well, no, I had always been spiritual. Um, but I mean, when I started to become conscious, instead of an unconscious competent, I turned into a conscious. One book that I turned to was As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Because I was very interested in the first law of um, perpetual transmutation, which is our thoughts. So in that, in that book, As a Man Thinketh, it has a chapter on serenity. Now, I'm going to read just the first paragraph. It's only like a three-page, three-page, I copied this, three-page starts out with this. Calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It is a result of long and patient effort in self-control. Its presence is an indication of ripened experience and of more than ordinary knowledge of the laws and operation of thought. A man becomes calm in the measure that he understands himself as a thought evolved being. For such knowledge necessitates, necessit, no, sorry, necessit, necess, oh my gosh, now I'm doing it on purpose. Necessitates, necessitates, oh my gosh, the understanding of others as the result of thought. 
As he develops a right understanding and sees more and more clearly the internal relationships of things by the actions of cause and effect, he ceases to fuss and fume and worry and green, grieve and remains poised, steadfast and serene. And it goes on. Now this is only three pages. When I first started and on my way to quieting my critical mind so I could concentrate on the beauty and the abundance and actually to start concentrating more on the universe itself and my connection, I took this serenity chapter and a nice cup of tea. I sat down every morning and I wrote it out every morning for three months. <laughs> Why? Because the words are beautiful. And as I wrote, I absorbed. And it got so that when I sat down, my mind would suddenly, it would be like entering the forest with all those tree canopies. My mind would just go, and calm. So every morning I would sit down with my cup of tea, feel that, ah, oh, and write out this chapter in total peace. That quieted my mind. And it got so that during the day when my mind would turn to lack or, or, or something that was troublesome, I would calm, I would recite different parts of this that I could remember. And it would just calm me down again and allow me to breathe this this is this is a great book i'll say again and della maybe we should type that in the comments it's as a man thinketh by james allen this is uh, serenity i think is chapter four and i dare you <laughs> i challenge you to start writing this out because when your mind is at peace my gosh, it's better than gold. It's better than gold. Now, so when I'm talking about gratitude and I'm talking about peace, so further under that peace, it's experiencing things in life that bring you awe. It's that precious time in the woods. It's listening to music that lifts you into this place of, ah, just, it lifts you into the universe itself. Um, Gladius, spending time in your garden and seeing things grow. Life, life, I mean real life. That is a miracle in itself. So, you know, seeing things grow from nothing. Seeing actual evolution happening. That's, that is the miracle of life. And when you, when you open yourself up to these moments, allow yourself to become part of it. Thank you. Allow yourself to become part of it. That will help give you peace too. Number one, it's treat, all of a sudden it becomes sacred. A bean plant's not just a bean plant, but it's this incredible being you know, that had every little piece of knowledge in a tiny little seed. Everything, everything it needed to be in that tiny little seed. That's amazing. That's amazing. And every little seed is different and carries its own, own wisdom in what it's going to be. That's, that's miraculous. And it makes you treat it sacredly. And when you treat things sacredly, then you're entering into an abundance-filled world. All of a sudden, things become sacred to you. Your time, how you spend your time, how you are, what you're listening to to bring you into that peace and that quiet. You've now entered into a, even a further, further step into creating the actual life itself of abundance, feeling the joy in some of the things that you see. You know, you don't, when your dog comes up and wants to be pet, you don't ignore it anymore. You're actually giving it your full, full attention. 
you are now participating in life instead of outside of life in the ego and preoccupied by things you can't control or that don't even matter. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that is very important. So it's that peace and then keeping that peace with the sacred moments. That's what it is basically. And I'll tell you, when I was first doing the serenity, when I first, I should have brought the book instead of the copies. I usually hand these out at anything I speak at. But the, um, when, I, when, when I first started doing this, um, I was driving down the road and that's when I noticed the sky. And for me, the sky, oh my gosh, I should have been a pilot. I just, the vastness of that sky, just, and when it's so beautiful and the sky is a deep blue and at the contrast with the trees, I just, I just, I love it. I just feel this over immense feeling of awe and peace and that things are always as they are supposed to be. And a calmness always settles upon me. I used to always stop. I still do. If it's a beautiful sky, I will pull over to the side of the road if I'm driving and take pictures because to me, it's just incredible. And, and those are the precious moments. Those are, um, that's, that's starting to see life and allowing life to bring peace into you. So that's, that's important. And when you're, when I'm looking at that sky, and I'm seeing that vastness and I'm seeing that beauty and I'm, I'm just feeling the universe, all of a sudden I feel the universe. I feel that I am part of this immense, vast, spacious, spacious and incredible space. And that helps to bring you into abundance. You have to find your own. I'm not saying everybody's going to have this fascination with the sky like me, but maybe it's something else and whatever. And you know what it is because you'll feel it when you see it. And, and it might be something that all of a sudden you start to have a new look about. Maybe it's water. Maybe it's the mountain. Maybe it's a tree, a beautifully shaped tree. Maybe it's an odd shaped tree. I don't know, whatever it is to you, allow it to bring its greatest gift to you. And that is that calmness, that awe, that incredibleness of, of life. That will also raise your vibration. So many times we rush and we get, when we're, when we're in that ego, we don't notice things. We don't treat things sacredly. We don't, we're too wrapped up in our head. We put... What it really does is it puts a bubble around you and you are in this bubble isolated in yourself and your problem. And it's a terrible place to be because there's, there's no way for things to get in to help you because you don't even see things. You don't see the sacredness of anything. You don't see the people trying to help you. My mother, you know, she's, she doesn't see the love around her. She's so wrapped up in her own stuff, her own little tiny world, that she doesn't see the absolute love of her neighbors and, and the little five, a six-year-old girl who sends her cards and everything. She doesn't see the love. She thinks it's cute, but she doesn't understand how much that girl looks up to her. She doesn't understand how, how much abundance she has by sharing sharing her experiences with this little girl by really taking this little girl and say, you know, and helping to build her. That brings me to my next thing, how much she would get in receiving those little moments. If we can step out of that bubble with the gratitude, with the awe and the sacredness of life, all, then all of a sudden we, we step out of the worry. In fact, there's no room. And that brings me to the second, service. Service. Service to others. And service with our whole heart and soul. Everything we should do is in service. Everything we do is in love. Because with love, because spirit is love. 
And, and when we act in love, when we serve in love, when we give of ourselves in love, then we are in spirit, totally, absolutely. And that is abundance. So how do we do that? Do we have to volunteer at something? Yeah, you can if you want to. I don't know if I can all the time. I mean, I'm a single mom of three boys. I have a very busy house. I'm taking care of my mother and I'm also do a business. And I try, I try to do, but you know what I do because I can't have a guaranteed schedule to go work somewhere. Every person that comes into my life, I always make it my goal that they leave me in a better place than when they came. So whether that is the girl who's handing me my coffee, whether that's the person at the stoplight who honked at me, <laughs> whatever, or maybe that's the person I, I bump into in the, in the grocery store. I always, always leave people better than when they even came. That's my gift. And my gift is also to never ever turn someone away who needs, needs my, my anything, anything. Um, needs to talk or needs time. I'm never too busy to talk. I'm never too busy to help. I am always here. And that way, everything comes from a loving heart. And when I feel like I serve, all of a sudden, it brings into my world love. I get three times more than I give hundred times more. It makes my world feel full. It makes my world feel joy. It makes my world feel immense gratitude and awe. And it makes my world feel complete. And that's abundance. When we're caught in our heads, when we're all worried about something, we don't give. In fact, we pull back because of lack. When we have lack, we want to pull in and hold. So when we open ourselves up to giving and serving in every way that we can think and what we can do, then all of a sudden our heart like grows. <laughs> you know, like that Grinch, you know, his heart grew. <laughs> I love that story. His heart grew, but your heart grows. Everything grows. Sir Gladius, would you like to comment? Uh, let's see. I just saw you come. That's why I asked. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I think he just got muted. Della, did he mute or? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, so I do a lot of service. Yeah. And um, and it feels good. It feels right. Um, one of the one of the other things that I do is I, I constantly weekly uh, part of a codependency class uh, because my early childhood stuff created a people pleaser and an enabler, and uh, and um so so the, so so my trick is as long as i don't neglect myself as, I, as long as i give myself care uh, uh, what what's necessary then um, i think i think that's excellent and it is well that's the other thing you have to treat yourself well i mean you have to you are a special you are spirit <laughs> you're a spirit in a body that's what you are you have to treat yourself well and I think with people pleasers, and Gladius, you tell me if I'm wrong, okay? I have always felt that when people pleasing, when you're people pleasing, it comes from a different space in you than just opening your heart of service. It's more of um, uh, a worthiness feeling. Um, it comes from a more of a... Uh, uh, maybe worthiness is not the right, right word, but it comes from, um, it's from a different place. It's, it's from a need, a, a lack and a worthiness. Am I right or wrong? How do you feel? 
How would you describe it? I, I think you're right. I'm trying to, you know, uh, it's a survival technique as a young child to get my needs met. You know, it's based on conditional love, um, you know, yeah. and so, I, you know, I will get my, hopefully get my needs met if I act a certain way or produce a certain way. Um, yeah. and, that, and then that becomes habitual. So, um, yeah. So, so worthiness. So it is, it's like, it's like giving and getting. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's built on expectations. So, so, um, so the, so the service that I try to do, I try to do it not built on expectations. Like if I'm doing service, I just do that. And, and without expecting anything in return, if I get something, then great, you know, I can enjoy that. But if I don't, I don't have to feel uh, disappointed. Exactly, exactly. And if you, and if you, when you're doing a service, and I learned this at a young age, and yeah, my, my growing up, was very conditional too. So I do understand where you're coming from, totally. Um, one thing, when I, when I do service for someone, it is all about them. I mean, I am looking in their eyes. That's how I know what they want and need and, and will feel better with. And that, when I look into their eyes, it is, all them and do i really think about myself at that point not really no and it's not that i'm reaching out it's it's a gift i'm giving them do you see the difference it's a gift i'm giving because mm -hmm. i know right like right now in COVID, people are a mess and so if i can give them one minute to feel a little more ease a little more flow a little more happiness I've served and that's just my gift. It's a gift. I don't expect anything in return. Do I get things in return? Of course I do, but that comes from inside me, you know, and that's all right. So yeah, Gladius, you bring up good points. I'm very glad you're on tonight. I like it. No, I like it. You make me stretch. I love it. I love to stretch. So I always love that. Yeah. And it makes me think. So yeah, keep, keep it coming. <laughs> So, all right, so when we have abundance, when I want also, uh, there are a lot of, people talk a lot about affirmations. I do think affirmations are great. I, but I feel that in order to change any belief in you, ah, I don't, I go back and forth with affirmations. I think affirmations are great for a starting and, and for a lot of people, they're good for starting, but ultimately it has to become something bigger inside of you. But abundance, I, when I do affirmations, I want to feel them. I want to have fun with them. I don't just say an affirmation like my life is filled with abundance and joy. If I say that my life is filled with abundance and joy, that does absolutely nothing <laughs> so what i have to do is i either make up a song i dance i twirl i feel it i allow myself to come more alive in it and then so if you're going to do affirmations make them simple make them something that is not too terribly far from your belief system but enough to get it in there if you do something too far reaching, it's gonna take you longer to achieve it uh, because your belief system will rebel. But if you can get it so that it is a baby step into it, then your mind will switch over a lot more easy. And then you can go another step and another step. Do you see? So affirmations are good. Um, I use them, if I use an affirmation, I do it more for a boost than I do for actual changing a belief. I feel with changing a belief, I rather do it by starting to feel good about who I am. And I do that by understanding my place in the universe. Do you see the difference? And then it's solid. And it's not just an affirmation. It's because that's what I become. Do you see the difference? So it takes a little bit more, 
but it's longer lasting. It's like I was talking to this guy again and I even questioned him. You know, he, everyone says, stay positive, stay positive. Well, I see people all the time that are staying positive and they're, they're so-called positive, but you look at them, <laughs> you just watch them and, and they look so fragile. <laughs> they look like one word that's not in their positive realm and they're gonna crack like an egg. They just haven't built it from in here. They're building it from out here in, instead of in here out. And that's how I kind of feel with affirmations. The affirmation has to come inside you and build you from in here instead of coming out and staying out. Do you see what I'm saying? It's hard to describe. It, it, yeah, one builds artificialness and one you become it. That's what I'm trying to say. Any questions on that? Carolyn, do you get that? You're on mute, hon. Okay, yes, I do. Yes, I do get that. Okay, all right. Gladius, do you get it too? Uh, yes. Um, you know, I think it, it speaks a little bit to that bubble, the bubble you were talking about, uh, the yeah. ego. So a lot of this stuff is tied to ego. And I think with humility, um, practicing humility, then a lot of this stuff sort of, Re resolves itself um but as far as the beliefs go i think that again is is like uh some of this early childhood stuff you um it becomes an addiction like if you have a certain belief you're like addicted to that belief and you you continue to make the same mistake same mistake the same mistake over and over and over again and um so what, what's up for me is is i've often identified some of those beliefs were basically based on lies so I had to change my beliefs and, and like any addiction, um, you do it on a, a moment by moment, day by day, week by week uh, thing. So you, you first have to identify it and then you have to systematically change your um, uh, habit. And so for, for me, it's 28 days. So I have to string together 28 days. I can break, it, break a bad habit or start a good habit. Right, true. So, so. Class. depends how ready you are. There are many yeah. ways to look at some of these um, because I had to work through some of my. Well, we all do. If all our parents were, so, if I was such a perfect parent, I always say uh, uh, the greatest parent in the world is a parent who tries to get their kid through all that childhood and everything with as little damage as possible. <laughs> and more belief in themselves. And then you've got an excellent parent. But, but parenthood is just not that way. We're all people. And a lot of times we get whatever our parents, what, what they were raised or how they were brought up or teachers even worse. You know, I mean, my teachers were just very um, harsh. So, so do you have to, when, and, and I did end up with a lot of stuff. And, and so um, you work through it. Go ahead, Carolyn. Were you going to say something? Uh, Elena, uh, the part that you were saying about the, okay. With being a parent now, and my, my children range from age 22 to 32. Wow. Um, you know, I have three, and there's one girl in the middle. But, um, and now being a grandparent, I'm looking at it like, okay, Carolyn, you're 52 years old. You don't have time for all of this in between stuff, and you know how it works. So, when there's an issue, I look at it as this there's an issue. I got all these problems I'm looking at. So, let me put a little dose of gratitude in there. That gratitude is like the fire, let it burn off some of them problems. So I can now see what I really got to work with. I like that. I it speeds up time. It, 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 um, I, don't, I don't waste my time dealing with stuff I really don't have to deal with. But all I got to do is look at my, use my gratitude. Kind of like a, you know how you fire hose something out where it fire hoses it in. Gratitude does get you in the right mode to deal with everything. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll find that your stuff is not as big as you thought. It's not as big as you thought. 
And if I get my kids to do that. Yourself to, to, to seeing life truly as it is. Exactly. And it helps. Get my kids to do that. I'm working on that part. So they'll bring me less. <laughs> no. so what you said about the parenting is right. Because parenting, with me being 52, what my parents had to go through with me is totally different from what I had to go through with my kids. Yes. That that they came through. And when, whenever they have kids, which when I've got one, they'll see that it's totally different. So you have to speed up. Like gratitude helps you with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is different. I, I agree. It is funny though. You you do bring your I'm pretty I'm a very calm person. I've worked through a lot of what Gladius has is working through. I get it. And and is there always more? Of course. But they're not as big as it used to be. And so when I work through that um, with my kids, what I'm seeing now as they get older, I got pretty chill kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to say no drama, no, no craziness. We've got a pretty chill house. They're good, good kids. They, they're getting their lives in order. I, I very proud of my boys. I have three boys. So it does, it, it, and it also, who you are does influence the people around you. It's amazing, it's amazing. But yes, I do all, Carolyn, the gratitude is, I, I think people use the gratitude wrong so many times. Mm -hmm. um, I know psychotherapists just say, write things that you're happy about, but really there, it's, it's a world. The gratitude is, is a world that you build where, where you feel it all day long. I used to do, when I first started, I did my gratitudes in the morning and the gratitudes at night. And during the day, I would make sure I would have three gratitudes during the day, just awe, just things that blew me away or, or just like the sky or, or some kind of act of kindness that somebody did for me I would feel that gratitude and and it does like Gladia says the gratitude also makes you humble you know yeah. Because yeah. It, uh, it's like a gift comes to you and that humbles you in some ways I and, agree. and it's 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 just beautiful and and it's um yeah so gratitude is is a very big tool it's humongous I think it is one of the best tools that you can use to start changing things. As far as Gladius, you know, working through, I do think that sometimes there are many ways to work through some of these childhood things, quote unquote. And yeah, 28 days to break a habit. Sometimes it can be a little bit faster. It depends on it. Depends, depends. I, um, just to sideline a little bit, and, and a tool that I, that I used, it may help you, it may not, okay? But I'll give it and you can do what you will with it. How's that? <laughs> One thing I, it's actually from the Tao. I do, I know a lot of the Buddhists, I love it. Love, love, love. But the Tao had a wonderful one where um, you, where you go into a semi-meditation and then you ask for a white light to come through and you allow that white light to come through, break down the center of your body. And when it gets to a part, like the heart or one of the chakras or one of the, just, it, it, there'll be a block. And then you can call up the block, learn the story, decide if you wanted to keep it or you don't want to keep it. Is it true or is it not true? Is it something you want to change? Or is it something you want to keep? And then you can decide whether you want to keep it or not. And you can actually see it just leave. And for me, that helped tremendously. Now, you and I are different people. That might be a wonderful tool for you, or you might need to morph it in some way, or you might not need to use it at all. But I wanted to give you something that had worked for me and, um, you might like it. I still use it if I find I have a problem out here or I have something that has come into my business or I think it's me that might be causing that problem, heaven forbid. 
maybe it's something in my belief that I haven't discovered yet that is causing a holdup out here. So I will do that meditation just to see. And it's funny. I always find that when I get let that light, it's a wonderful meditation they come up with. When that light goes in, it will always, always find what it is that is causing the outside circumstance that I might not even be aware of, which I think is amazing. <laughs> I like that meditation. So that's my gift to you for tonight. I hope it helps in any way that it does. But this abundance, abundance really is building your life in a way that you start to see the abundance in it. Now, here's the thing. When you start having abundance in your life and you take, oh, I forgot one other thing, one more tool. This one you're gonna love. Ugh. <laughs> Expectancy. It's letting go of expectation. <gasps> what did she say? <laughs> expectation in other people expectation in what it should be so-called should be nothing should be anything nothing everything just is we make it what we make it um and as far as having expectation on another person uh that's silly because we're not in charge of them and we really don't know and they're they have freedom of choice so having expectation, if you let go of expectation, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it changes the whole table. And that expectancy, you'd be surprised how much that weighs on your mind. <gasps> the deer with her two little fawns just walked into my yard. I'm watching these fawns grow from when they were really, really little to getting bigger and bigger. And I mean, that's one of my giant gratitudes. I love it. But anyway, this, so when you do not have expectancy, all of a sudden you free yourself, free yourself to truly enjoying that other person you're with or that experience you're experiencing for just the fact that it is there. And what happens is, you start to just relax and feel the joy. And you might even find the universe comes in and, chain, and, and treats you with something miraculous that it would never happen any other time. See, I've had this happen so many times. When we, when we get ourselves out of our heads, and out of expecting things to be, and out of um, making things happen, instead of enjoying it in its sacredness and in its wholeness and in its abundance filled, all of a sudden we open up a connection. And when we open up that connection, it gives room for the universe to meet us halfway or fully. Um, I always talk about the time when I first wrote my book. Okay, I have a new story for you. So, so I met up with a person that I really, really liked and wanted to get to know better. And we had a delightful lunch, all right? And so this person was, um, you know, when we ended, I thought, okay, you know, it, I thought, well, you know, maybe we'll, we'll see each other again, la, 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 you know, all that. You want things to go well, right? Well, then I just sort of let go of that, and I thought, whatever it is, is. It was a delightful lunch. Leave it at that, Elena. It's no big deal. It was fun. As soon as I let go of that, I walked down. He, he went to his car. I was walking to mine, and the universe interceded. You wouldn't believe it. This woman stopped her car in the middle of the road, yelled down the street to me. She says, miss, miss. I said, what? And she says, 
I just want you to know you are absolutely beautiful. What, when does that happen? <laughs> I mean, seriously, when does that happen ever? And yeah, that was a beautiful compliment, but that's what it wasn't for. I think all of a sudden it cracked an ice and all of a sudden we started texting and talking. It's like me letting go and just enjoying caused the universe to just pop in. I've had that happen when I was doing choirs that all of a sudden something would happen because I got just into the flow, the Wu way of just doing, not expecting, just making things the best I could, bringing forth the best of myself and loving it and not thinking anything about it, not thinking I'm getting things, not thinking I'm making it happen, you know, just doing what I could the best I could. All of a sudden the universe comes in and gives it something more, something miraculous. It happens every time. When we open ourselves to the abundance, true abundance, which all of this is, that's when the universe has room for, well, we have room for the universe to come in. God, spirit, um, whatever, whatever your belief system is, that's when it can come in. It cannot come in if I'm expecting this person to respond to me, or I'm expecting the situation to be this way, or I'm gonna make it this way. As soon as we go into that, we're back into our world, we're back into the ego, we're back into the critical mind, we're back into this is how it has to be. Anytime we're in judgment, anytime we're into any of that so-called harshness, we lose connection and we lose the abundance and we go back into our bubble. Okay. <gasps> comments. I'm sure there's going to be comments. <laughs> there has to be. Della, are there any from Facebook? I've got some. Oh, yes. We have a few. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Della. <laughs> I um, just wanted to say, thank you, Carolyn. I just wanted to say we have uh, Faye Ray, who was um, speaking earlier, how it is difficult it. to do. Um, yeah. and what, then, did what did she what did she, uh, what did she In the beginning of the talk, when you were starting to explain about abundance and just staying in an attitude of gratitude, she was just saying that sometimes it's difficult to do that. <gasps> yes, it is. Ooh, yeah. Faye. Oh, Faye. Oh, my God. The talent you have. Uh, <laughs> Faye, Faye is, I, I'm always amazed. She puts her paintings on, on uh, Facebook and, oh, my gosh, you make my day every day. I'm, I'm serious. Your paintings. I love to see the progress in them. I love they're, they're just gorgeous, darling. They're gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. Um, and then we had a, um, Tammy um, Heidman. Yeah. No, she was just saying hello and letting us know that oh, she is. Hello, Tammy, you sweetheart. Yeah, she does the world of light meditation a lot. Um, okay, Faye, sometimes it is hard. Okay, and it and, and sometimes it does take so start small. Start small. Start thinking of the things you truly are grateful for. And it can be so small. When I first started um, you know, my world was not so good. Uh, it was, it was actually pretty darn bad. <laughs> and, and I started to do the gratitudes to get myself out of it. Cause it was like the freaking twilight zone. And I remember, um, I had to start very small, like my big red dog. I'm so grateful for my big red dog. <laughs> That's my Ralphie. Or and I'm so, so happy and uh, so happy and grateful for my big red dog and my little dog. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm awake this morning. I started very small. And I think more than that, if you're really, you know, it, it's, do me a favor, Faye. Just, you've got artist eyes. So 
use them. Use them to start noticing three things during the day that just make you take a second look, that just make you think, ah, that you know what I mean? And please turn off the news and please turn off all the noise out there for a little while. You have so much artisticness in you, and so does Tammy, actually, both of you. I, you're incredible, both of you. Um, that needs to flourish, and that flourishes when there's beauty around and when you feel secure. So start opening yourself. And I just did, and I actually don't like the vlog. I, don't, I think I take too long to get to the point. However, I have a vlog out there about... Um, listening to nature, you might want to listen to that blog because, and, and suffer through my little interlude. But at the very end, or not even the very end, from the middle to the end, I really get to the point, and you can do this. I know you can. And so if you start to open yourself to that, to the wonder of things, then the gratitude will start to come easier, and the problems will become more out here. Okay? All right, I hope that helps. Yeah, without the gratitude, without opening our eyes to the beauty of this world and seeing the sacredness of it, it's hard to think of it being in our world, especially when we have everything in the world telling us it's not. And that is the news, um, our situation, wearing masks, I wear masks, I'm for the masks, I hate the masks, I'll tell you right now. Keep forgetting and they keep fogging up my glasses. But yes, I agree they're needed right now. So I do it, but do I love it? No, okay, so when I put it on, I really have to do the things I'm grateful for for a minute and just say, okay, this too shall pass. But all that stuff is hitting us in the face constantly. We have to make the effort to make our world inside the most sacred world the most beautiful world the most secure world the world that serenity even says and i can't no a strong person a strong calm person is always loved and revered revered now wait a minute here it is he is like a shade giving tree in a thirsty land or a sheltering rock in the storm. Who does not love a tranquil heart, a sweet tempered balanced life? It does not matter whether it rains or shines or what changes come to those possessing these feelings for they are always sweet, serene and calm. And that comes when you start building that. This is a wonderful exercise. And Gladius, you might like this. I think you might. I, it might give you that, um, that centeredness in the morning to move forward with. I don't know. And, and Faye, that to you too. And, and Carolyn, I think you might like it. I think you might. I think everybody would. That's why I hand it out. But doesn't that sound... You have to build that within you. And that comes from feeling secure. And that comes from feeling that, that this life is filled with abundance and that you're part of it. That's what you're building. Okay? So these are some quick, well, not quick ways, but good tools. They're foundational tools that are very big. And no matter how far I evolve, and how much I learn and grow and understand and my own personal life evolves, I always keep these certain tools in my pocket. Why? Because they help all my other tools and everything I learn grow faster. And they, they set me up to being that calm center shade tree that I can absorb more, learn more, open to more, open my whole being to learning more and accepting, okay? These are the foundations and they're big. They sound small, they are not. I always find that I call everything baby steps because they are, 
nothing is hard. It really isn't. Universe, God, source didn't sit us down here and say, okay, I'm going to make it so hard for you. <laughs> you got to experience and create and, and just experience this life, but we're going to make it so hard. No, no, not at all. So why do we make it so hard? You know, so these tools, once you start practicing them and having fun with them, you'll find that they're fairly easy. Okay, but they're important, extremely important. Any more comments? And what, what time is it? I'm always, Oh gosh, did we go over? We went over a lot. I didn't mean to do that, guys. I'm sorry. Um, now, from now on, just so you know, in Green Terra, I'm going to be uh, only talking for like half an hour to 40 minutes. And then I thought, if you like, um, to let you solidify instead of turning this off and going back into your busy lives, I'd give you 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes for a little short meditation to just feel that peace. It's more of a journey where you can feel that peace and feel that, that centeredness inside yourself and maybe even get some clarity. I thought that might be nice. You'll have to let me know. Okay. Uh, but this time I went 17 minutes over. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Della, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something, hon? No, I wasn't going to say anything. Okay. Okay. All right, Gladius and Carolyn, how was tonight? Was it good for you? It was great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, really loved it. And, uh, and I think what you were talking about a lot, uh, I could really identify with the, the light coming in and finding the blockages. Cool. and uh vibrating i think the vibration I, i've pinned it down to like a limbic it's like a limbic connection that we have um and it's much easier to see with animals like your connection with your dog um people can witness that much easier than they can necessarily with people to people but um with practice it can become more noticeable so i think all your suggestions are great and uh it, what it brings up for me is even uh, even in the, the days of the Egyptians, um, they had, you know, similar thoughts and philosophies. Um, and basically what they use the term uh, exemplary. So yeah. it seems like you're creating an example for all of us to witness and, uh, wow. and uh, appreciate. Thank you. You're a sweetheart. I want the very best for you. I do. Thank you. And Thank Carol, you. Are you, too, you all set, hon? Yeah, I, it was great. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I was able to come back. I am glad you were able to come back. <laughs> yeah, and I'm um, glad you're feeling better. Oh, yes, I am. I'm feeling much better. And um, and then Della's my person that keeps reminding me about that gratitude. Yeah, about being in that spot. Um, yeah. keep it uh, up. So, so, and the part that you said about the expectancy, that was very new to me. Ah. Well, we'll have to talk more about that because that's, that's really big. And I was looking at it as expectancy or what I want the outcome to be, but when you said expectancy of what the other person should be, that's a huge one. <laughs> that, that's Isn't, huge. It? Isn't it? It's humongous that's because we like need to do that. So I will, I'm going to have a talk just on that because that, that changes everything. It really does. It's amazing. Yeah, even when you said it, I felt a lift. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It, it really, yeah. yeah. It's like weight just comes off you. Because mm -hmm. that's a load. You, it is. you don't understand that, that, that I like to call it the, the critical mind or ego because that's where it comes from, that expectancy and that, that judgment and what it's supposed to be. It's heavy. It's, it's a load. It's, it weighs on us. And when you can let it go, oh my God, you can start to just experience it for what it is and be and enjoy and, and just let it be. 
let it be. There's that song by the Beatles, let it be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of meaning with that, you know. There's a lot of meaning with that. My yeah. father was saying of um, when you're speaking with someone and something's urging you to something you need to say, go ahead, and but you don't want to hurt their feelings. He always says, go ahead and say it and let them add their own seasoning. Oh, who says that? My father. He does. Yeah, he got, um, you know how people say, take it with a grain of salt? Like they're warning you before they say something. Now, I want you to take this with a grain of salt, what I'm about to say. My dad said, don't even give them the warning. Just give it to them and let them add their own seasoning. Well, as long yeah. as you're nice about it. As well, long we're, as in the about so we're, we're in the country, so everything deals in cooking. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, in the country. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, I lived in the country for a little while. Okay. I, I liked it. Well, we didn't do so well there. But we really liked, I really liked, I, I really liked some of the people. Yeah. 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 It was interesting. It was an experience. I'll tell you about it someday. I learned so much. Okay. There. Oh my God. I learned so much. But anyway, all right. I've kept you long enough. This has been a fabulous one. I'm very happy with this one. And I just have a good week with it. You know, next week I will open with questions because if you're trying all these tools, I know there will be questions. Okay. Like, this didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. All right. Have a fabulous week, everyone. Love you. Remember that spirit is love and you are spirit. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Namaste, guys. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, Gladys.